Looking for this? If you're a TBR7 owner, chances are you probably are. This is the rear brake clevis for the Tau Tau TBR7. Mine's a 2021 model. And whether your clevis never came, which happens for about 50% of TBR7 buyers, or your clevis broke while riding, which I've seen in a couple small cases, or the stock pin that holds the clevis to the rear brake lever shears off while riding, which happened to me and is why I'm no longer using this clevis. If you are a TBR7 owner and encountered any of these scenarios, you've probably looked around for a replacement clevis or even asked your dealer and found that there are none. You can't get the stock part and you can't get any part off the shelf that will fit on this bike with the correct thread and pitch, as well as the dimensions to connect to the rear brake lever. Well, after today, that's no longer the case. Let me tell you all about it in just a sec. In this little box right here is my solution for the Tau Tau TBR7 rear brake clevis problem. Here's a little card showing the exploded view of my design and some assembly instructions. Throw that out of the way for now. Take some foam off in here. You'll see my billet 304 stainless steel Tau Tau TBR7 rear brake clevis kit. Not just the clevis, but a whole kit to replace the stock parts. I do have these for sale. If that's all you're interested in and just trying to find a quick solution for your bike, don't worry about watching the rest of the video. Just head down to the link and there should be two different links as options for purchasing this. One is just a Google order form I created since I haven't had a chance to figure out how to add a shop to my website yet. And another one is to tbr7.com under the brake upgrade section where they were nice enough to go ahead and add my kit to it. But if you are a little bit more curious about what this part is, let me tell you all about it. So this is a TBR7 clevis kit that I designed to be compatible with the Tau Tau TBR7. It is probably also compatible with the Hawk 250. I'm not too familiar with that bike, but I know they're very similar. I haven't had anyone try it out on theirs yet, but if you have a Hawk 250 and have a clevis issue and want to try one of these out, shoot me an email or fill out that order form and I'll get one sent out to you. So let's start with the meat of this thing. This here is the clevis itself. This is a nice chunk of billet 304 stainless steel, custom CNC machined, uh, based off a design that I created. It's a very nice feeling part, really nice surface finish. So what this is, is a 304 stainless steel shoulder screw. So it's got a six millimeter shoulder diameter and an M5 by 0.8 thread on the end. So what it does is it goes through the two holes in the clevis at the bottom which connects to the rear brake lever. It's a really nice fit there with that six millimeter ground shoulder and allows the clevis to pivot really freely around the axle, but it doesn't have any uh, or much of any radial slop, which makes it feel really nice on the bike. Then out the end here, we've got the M5 thread sticking out and what goes there, instead of the tiny little cotter pin that breaks off on the stock one, we have this 304 stainless flanged nylock locking nut. I went with the flange nut over just a normal hex nut and washer just because it's a little bit more streamlined. I like having as few parts as possible and it just looks a little bit nicer than a hex nut and washer does. But what that does is it goes and tightens down against the shoulder, the six millimeter shoulder diameter, but the tolerances were designed so that the lock nut tightens and jams against the six millimeter shoulder before it contacts the face of the, of the clevis. So when it's fully tightened down, it can still pivot as freely as it can when it's loose, but the nut is still jammed tight against the shoulder screw so that it won't come loose. And then the nylon locking feature of the nut is just a, an added backup so that it doesn't, doesn't come out. And to top it all off, I just provided a uh, 304 stainless M8 hex nut to jam on the top of the clevis for once you get it in the correct position, you can jam that down. What that does is it keeps the threads loaded tight against the threads on the master cylinder's um, piston because if you just attach it without it, now every time you hit the brakes, the clevis threads are gonna jump through the backlash of the threads and impact the bottom side of the threads, you know, right above it and it doesn't sound like a big deal and it's probably not, but once you do that for 
10, 20,000 miles, those impacts back and forth crossing the backlash on the threads could start wearing your threads out and eventually break it off. So what this jam nut does is not only sets your position so that when you take off the pin for whatever reason, your clevis isn't dangling freely. And then it also, by keeping it tight, holds it in the same position on the threads and keeps them loaded at all times. So you never have the loading and unloading, which would cause you know potential fatigue failures of the threads over time. Just a, a nice little feature. The nuts are pretty cheap, so I could, could throw it in the kit and just create a more complete product. Pretty happy with how it turned out. I've been riding with one on my bike for about two or three weeks now. It's going very well. Haven't had any issues with it whatsoever. When you push the lever, you can see the clevis is able to pivot around the axle as intended. Makes for a nice joint. Oh, can't sell that one, just dropped it on the ground. So what I did was took the stock clevis and just looked at the defining features of it. Obviously the correct size and pitch of the thread on the top to connect to the master cylinder, the correct size through hole for whatever pin or screw you're putting through there to connect to the brake lever. Um, just different things like that, the distance between the pin and the top surface of the threads, try to keep that somewhat consistent to make sure my new design would fit. Then what I did was 3D printed out of a piece of plastic, um, a prototype of my clevis design. This one here, the first prototype was actually quite a bit different than the stock one. I made it a little bit longer just to get more adjustment out of it and also gave it a little bit more clearance between the pin and the nut so that you could um, have a lot more adjustment downward without bottoming out. What I didn't like about this one was that I ended up making the, um, the legs here pretty similar to the stock TBR7 clevis and they just came out really thin. I wasn't super happy with it from a manufacturing standpoint and then also just kind of made me a little bit weary about the strength. So what I did was beef it up a little bit, make a couple other design changes that I noticed and came up with this next one that I also 3D printed. Then with this one, I actually put some threads in the top, attached it to my bike and then got some off the shelf shoulder screws to test out that portion of the design. And I actually rode around with this plastic clevis on my rear brakes for not too long, maybe 30, 40 miles or so. And it actually worked out really great. Obviously you wouldn't want to use plastic long term there, but that 3D printing prototype gave me really quick feedback on my design and kind of verified that it would fit and that everything would work. Once I did a couple more design changes and looked through all the tolerances that I wanted for manufacturing, made a mechanical drawing and sent it out for quote to a few different machine shops. Got all those quotes back, uh, chose the, the one that I wanted to go with. It wasn't the cheapest one of the quotes, but it was the one that seemed the most technically competent and was the most responsive. So I went with them and basically waited for four to six weeks while they made these things for me. After about six weeks of patiently waiting, I got a cardboard box in the mail with 50 of these beautiful, beautiful machined clevises. If I was just gonna have one of these made down the street, it would probably cost me a hundred bucks. But when I got 50 of them, pricing was a little better. I didn't expect the surface finish to be this great because I didn't put any surface finish call outs on my print. I was just looking for dimensional accuracy for the most part. So yeah, I was really happy with how they turned out. Instantly started doing some, some checks and some tests on my bike, uh, as well as just fit checks between all the pins and the screws and the hex nuts and everything, making sure it all worked out really well. Then what I did was go back and look at my print and create a Excel spreadsheet for each dimension that I called out on my, or my 2D mechanical drawing. And I went back and started measuring each individual part that I got and noting it down in a spreadsheet with conditional formatting, which would tell me if the measurement I had just entered was out of my specifications on the drawing, it would flag it as red so I would know you know, that that part didn't conform to what I designed it to. And then I would, you know, either not sell that one or dig in deeper on what that difference was and if it was gonna be an issue for me. That worked out really well just to make sure that I'm sending out quality product and, you know, really double checking things before sending them out to the TBR7 community. Uh, luckily I haven't found any, I've only measured 10 or 15 so far. 
but I haven't found any that didn't pass tolerances. So everything's looking really great, really happy with the product. And now I just want to get it out into the hands of the great TBR7 community so that there's no longer an issue with the TBR7 brake clevises because I've seen some pretty nasty pictures of people duct taping them together using zip ties, uh, some crazy weld jobs, cutting out an angle iron which broke off in traffic, you know, just a lot of kind of sketchy and unsafe stuff. So I'm really hoping that this will bring some value to the community and then also, you know, cover my costs that I had to spend to machine all these parts and uh, have some fun with it, maybe make a couple hundred bucks so that I can go back and design some more parts for this thing, maybe get into some performance stuff for, for the community to enjoy. And One of the calculations I did when sizing this thing was a shear calculation on this pin to make sure that the material was strong enough so that, you know, stomping on the brakes, this pin didn't shear off like my stock one did and uh, leave somebody's brakes useless. This pin with a clevis like this stomping down and it having a brake lever in the middle, it puts it in what's called double shear. Um, so I did some quick, you know, strength of materials calculations on that and found that this little pin right here with the 304 stainless that it is, should be able to handle 6,000 pounds of force before it has a shear failure. Pretty high safety factor if you assume the heaviest person riding this is 300, 350 pounds and they put all their weight on the rear brake lever at once, um, they'd have about a safety factor from this thing breaking. So I was pretty happy with that, but I still did go back and do a check on that with physical parts. So I set the clevis upside down, put the pin through it and attached a steel plate that I could press on with an arbor press that had a load cell on it. I'll show a video of that right here. But the max I could go to on that arbor press was about 2,500 pounds. I think I hit like 2,350 in this video. And I, I loaded the clevis to that. No failures of the clevis and no shear failures of the pin, which my calculations check out. It shouldn't have failed, but it's always good to see that it can handle that much. I mean, it's a, it's a tiny little pin, so 2,500 pounds is pretty substantial. Yeah, so I've just been doing a lot of checks like that, and it's been a fun little project and experience for me. So I think I've rambled on enough about my little brake clevis design. It's not a super complex part, but it's still a lot of fun and cool to see, you know, a pile of 50 of these things that you designed on the computer just in your hand. I'll do a quick install tutorial in another video. It's not too complicated, but there are some uh, insights that I have on how to do it, tools to use, torque specs if you, if you torque your parts down, which you should. Um, and yeah, so if you're interested in purchasing this kit, check out the links below or send me an email and I'll get you hooked up with one and get you one sent out. And then come back and check out the install video once you get it and how to put it on your bike. Also, let me know down in the comments what you think of this design and if there's any other TB, TBR7 or other motorcycle parts you'd like to see me design and get made and sent out to you. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one. <laughs>